Doris, you you started calling side the finals sideline doing started doing sideline reporting for the finals in two thousand and nine, um, and you did till twenty nineteen. That's a it seems from the outside looking in like it's a really hard fucking job. Um, when did you start to feel somewhat comfortable with that particular part of the job because it's a completely different beast than punditry or calling games or anything like that with the amount of time that you have to do your thing at a, on a stage like that. Yes. So it's interesting. The reason I started sideline reporting in any way, shape or form, I started as an analyst, but um, I wanted to be a part of the women's final four and Myers Drysdale was then the lead analyst on it. And we had a boss by the name of Mark Shapiro back then. And I, I don't know what made me have the courage to do this because this is so outside my personality. Um, I just called this guy and I said, I really think I deserve to be a part of the, the, the finals. And he said, well, Ann's our analyst. If you want to do sideline, I'll let you do that. And, and that's how it was. So I panicked. I'm like, I don't know how to do that job. And I called Michelle Tafoya and Al Troutwig. I don't know if you guys know Al. He's a longtime Madison Square Park Garden personality, big presence on the NBC Olympics for a time. And I basically said, how do I do this? And, uh, and so that, that was my foray into it. And I remember when the finals uh, offer came up, it was actually Jeff Van Gundy who called me because Michelle Tafoy, I think, was moving to NBC. And he said, would you have any interest in that? Because I'm sure they were talking as a group, like, who's going to replace Michelle? And I said, yes, you know, I'd have an interest, but I don't want to lose my analyst opportunities. I like that job better. Um, But, Tommy, it was so great. I mean, think about the the finals I have called, you know, uh, me and the Lakers against uh, Orlando was my first one. Jesus, I'll never forget the back cut layup that was blown by Courtney, I think. Right, JJ? Yeah. yeah. Off um, the in, off the inbounds. Game two. Thanks inbounds. for bringing it up. Thank you for bringing it up. Sorry, JJ. <laughs> you ever notice, I, one of the themes of this podcast is people like to bring up low moments in my life. Yes. We <laughs> lost <laughs> We lost never, the finals. They're not. never unsaid. They're never unsaid. I wasn't waiting. Let's, yeah. let's get to, we'll get to Philly, Philly, Toronto <laughs> next. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I, I knew that that was like, it was just very cool being a part of those finals runs. It really was like LeBron had all those runs, the Steph and and uh, LeBron matchups. Really, just just again, incredible good fortune. I, I have a, a, essentially two questions um, because these, there's a number of discussions that I've had since I started calling games, uh, both with uh, other analysts, with play by play people, uh, and with sideline reporters as well. Um, just the inherent challenge of the sideline reporting job where you maybe have three hits during a game. Yeah. You've got to get in, you've got to get out, you've got to provide information. Um, so I, I'm, I'm curious about that. And then also your just general approach about being a color analyst. We asked Mike when he was on the show, what makes a good broadcaster? But specifically for you, what makes a good color analyst? Yeah, I'm, I'm so glad you appreciate that sideline reporter role because I've always found that to be the harder role to make an impact on the broadcast. Um, I, do, I, as a sideline reporter, do not like it when you hear a sideline reporter talking over action, which means you've got about 15 to 20 seconds. I mean, you can talk over action in a regular season game first second second, third quarter, whatever. But NBA basketball happens in an instant. And greatness is potentially happening on both sides of the floor like this. So I I always hated to hear myself giving a report over act. Just thought it it wasn't right for the viewer. Um, So you are trying to make an impact in such short windows of time. Your preparation level is exactly the same. Your opportunity to affect the broadcast. And the best advice I ever received about it um, was from Al Troutwick the first time I called him and asked him how to do the job. And his response was, there's going to be nights as a sideline reporter where you get off the air and you feel like you helped elevate that broadcast. You were an important piece of it. He goes, but the vast majority of times you're going to step off the air and you're going to go, holy shit, they paid me to do that. Like you couldn't <laughs> believe it. So it's a very tough job and probably underappreciated. I remember one time, finals, Steve Kerr goes down at home against Cleveland by like 22. The cutoff's 20, and they send me anyway. And he goes, what the hell, Doris? <laughs> like, you're not supposed to do this. And he ends up saying something about it in the postgame. Like, I feel so bad. And I'm like, hey, 
I didn't take it personally. Don't stress it. <laughs> um, versus analyst work, like, you know, you're just in it every play. I, you know, so preparations somewhat similar. Like, all I do is watch NBA games. <laughs> it's like, you know, like that's my entire life. <laughs> and then if you're not, if you're not doing that, you're listening to podcasts or one drastic change in, in, in broadcast nowadays is the amount of information you could consume. JJ talked about second spectrum. Um, we used to have another medium. I'm, I'm totally blanking on what we called it. But the podcasts that are available, the media coverage, the 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 minutia you can get into, I feel like sometimes I could get right up to tip and I could still be consuming more information and then distilling that appropriately, right? You, you're going to leave far more, in, much more information in your pocket because the game will dictate where the broadcast should go. That's, those are just facts. And the most like I just want I don't want people to turn it off because I'm calling it just please stay with me and enjoy this game as much as I am that's for sure